Hi, I'm Matt Patterson with The Oklahoman, and today I'm joined by Oklahoma City Animal Welfare Superintendent Julie Bank, and this will be uh, a monthly visit we'll have with you, and we're also joined by Mina today, um, one of the hi. shelter's dogs. Talk a little it, bit about Mina. Isn't she beautiful? She is very well behaved. She is actually full grown. That's amazing. And she is about a year old, very well behaved, very kind, gentle, and sweet, and we think she will make a great family pet for anybody who has kids or anybody who has other dogs. She just really is a good old dog that's looking for a new family today. And she's representative of all the animals that we have at the animal shelter. They get into our shelter for so many different reasons, but they're ultimately just looking for a new loving family to make theirs. And that's what she's hoping. Maybe for Valentine's Day, she could find a new, a new right. love. She's certainly sweet, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, one of the things we wanted to talk about today and something that comes up a lot with, with your department is animal cruelty. And that is a, an issue that, that you know a lot of people in your business are aware of. Talk about just how often that comes up for you guys in, in your daily work. Well, OKC okay, Animal Welfare has two cruelty investigators who do nothing but investigate an complaints of animal cruelty. And unfortunately, they come in every day. And there's kind of a good and bad to that. The bad is that we have to investigate them in the first place. And we see everything from misdemeanor level animal cruelty, things like animals left outside with no shade or just basic no food or water, on up to some pretty serious intentional heinous acts of violence and everything in between and these individuals are well trained to know what they're looking at and to spend a lot of time doing investigations so that we can protect these guys who deserve protection and not only do they deserve protection there's a law that says you can't be cruel to an animal sometimes people think it's my animal I can do what I want with it but that's not true these are living breathing creatures and there are laws that protect the animals every day and our staff are the ones that are out there really um, pounding the pavement, trying to put the bad guys away if they're going to be mean to an animal. And I know you weren't able to bring her today, but Rudy is Rudy. a dog that a lot of people have been following that story. Her nose was basically cut off. Her nose someone. and her ears. And we have not gotten any real leads that have gotten us to the person who actually did this, but we're still looking. In the meantime, she is currently in foster care. She's recovering great. She has a little bit of a cold, so she's on antibiotics, and as soon as that is cleared, she's going to be made available for adoption. But she's a representative of, you know, the amazing animals that unfortunately sometimes get caught up in people doing bad things to them. And animal cruelty is bad in itself, but there's been so many studies that show a link between animal cruelty and other types of violent crime. We see animal cruelty when it comes to domestic violence and child abuse and elder abuse issues and individuals exerting power and control over their loved ones through animals. And there's tons of information and we actually even have a booklet that people can get from us at our website to learn more about the link between animal abuse and family violence. So on that perspective, people who are cruel to animals are often cruel to people as well and it's something that people should pay attention to and that's why we're really putting out a plea to the community ask people to report it if you see an act of animal cruelty. If you're a parent it's it's a really good idea at a young age to, to kind of teach empathy towards other living creatures is that something that you yes. find as well? Uh, you know empathy, being humane, being kind to other animals and other living creatures is really important because you want them to grow up to understand that these are cre little creatures who really deserve that kind of respect and care. And there's so many different programs. We even have a program called Kids for OKC Animals where kids can get involved in making a difference in the lives of animals. And if you see a kid who maybe is being a little aggressive, it's important to teach them the right way to pet an animal and not to pull their tail and pull their ears. But that stuff is normal for kids, right? And you could teach them not to do it. If there's a child out there, whoever is doing more heinous stuff like We've had anim uh, children put animals in microwaves. We've had uh, children really kill animals and do some really horrible stuff. That's a child that you shouldn't look away. It's not okay to say a boy is gonna be a boy. Kids don't do that. And if you do have a kid or even an adult that you see showing those kinds of signs of things, that's a child that needs some intervention. And we want that child and that adult to get that intervention. You know. Um, most of the serial killers that we've had out there have actually had animal abuse in their background. And while we're not saying everyone who abuses an animal is going to grow up to be a serial killer, we are saying that any type of abuse 
is wrong and it's something that should be looked at and something should be known. So again, report it and try to get the person some help. Do you guys find that animals that have come into your facility that might have been abused are more difficult to adopt out because of maybe behavior issues that they've picked up from just being afraid of humans or can you guys yeah. work with them when you're in the when when they're in absolutely you know we really don't see that animals that are being abused are the more aggressive animals a lot of time they're more the the more submissive animals because that's what's allowing the person to actually abuse them very similar to humans right they're going to abuse somebody that's going to be more submissive than them um, to exert power and control and they do that around animals as well what we end up seeing a lot of animals that come in are animals that have medical conditions so they'll be starved to death and they'll be skin and bones and they need some extra extra food before they can actually be placed up for adoption or an animal that is a little shy or has we see animals with burn wounds and cut wounds and certain things where they need care um, we have a program called the angel fund and the Angel Fund is a donation-based fund where individuals can actually give a donation to help those kind of animals. And we have a full veterinary crew that will look at those animals, provide a course of treatment for those animals, and then most of those animals will end up in foster care where we have volunteers who take them into their homes. And sometimes it takes a week and sometimes it takes a couple of months. But as long as it takes, we're going to rehabilitate that animal and then hopefully find um, that animal home. And the great news with that is if we publicize the story, a lot of times there's people out there who yeah, want to adopt them. Yeah. So they're often easier to find homes for if they have a particular story. But the goal really is to make them to trust people. And when you trust a person, when they learn to trust again, then they're going to be really the perfect pet for somebody. Do you, do you find that the laws are tough enough across the country as far as animal cruelty? Do you think that they could be strengthened or are they about mm -hmm. right? or where? Well, every community is different. Mm -hmm. There are certainly some communities that have really tough, really strong laws for animal cruelty. Um, here in Oklahoma City, it is something that we are looking at. We really haven't reviewed our animal cruelty laws in a long time. So we are currently in the process of looking at them to determine whether they're strong enough or whether we really need to reevaluate them and make them stronger. And that's something that we do as an organization all the time is really kind of evaluate whether we're doing right by the animals and right by the people. And we're going to be in the process right now of kind of reevaluating all, all of the city ordinances. Um, but we also look at city ordinances and we also look at state ordinances. And depending on the situation and depending on where it is, you know, Oklahoma City spans a couple of counties. Uh, so we have to kind of understand a city or a county or a state ordinance. and. Our field officers are trained in all of that and very aware of what they're looking at and how to proceed with the prosecution if that is required. You mentioned you have two investigators. Yeah. That, that's got to be a pretty tough job to, to see some of the things they see. I'll tell you, they tell me stories all the time about the work that they do, and um, it's pretty intense. They see a lot of sadness. They see a lot of uh, police activities. Um, and, but they're full investigators. You know, sometimes people make jokes that the animals at the animal shelter are just the dog catchers. And I'll tell you, it can't be further than the truth. These guys are well-trained, seasoned animal professionals who not only know animals, but also know law enforcement and also know how to work with people. Because a lot of the things that they see and that they deal with are, are society issues and people issues. So it's not just an animal issue. As I mentioned earlier, we're dealing with um, uh, we're dealing with domestic violence all the time. We're dealing with different types of abuse. We're dealing with different authorities that involve working with those people. We see hoarders. Those are individuals who have way too many animals. Usually there's um, other issues involved with them. So they have to be pretty savvy in knowing how to investigate that and deal with both human and animal issues. And they're, I'm pretty amazed at the work that they do. All of our other officers as well are trained in investigations, but when we have an investigation that looks like it's going to turn into something bigger, that's when the investigators will be called in. I think there's probably more uh, public awareness about these issues than, than ever before, but do you think that's translated at all into less incidents of animal cruelty, or is it? Well, we've, we've unfortunately, we've seen an increase in reports of animal cruelty, but I think it's exactly what you're saying. I think it's because more people are aware that 
being cruel to an animal is not a normal rite of passage, and it's just not acceptable in today's day and age. So we've seen more complaints, and we're going to encourage more complaints, because if there is cruelty going on, we want you to report it. We want to know about it so we can investigate, and hopefully that will ultimately mean a decrease in animal cruelty. But right now it's meaning more people are telling us about it, but I think we need more education programs and more intervention programs to be able to prevent cruelty from happening in the first place. If someone does observe cruelty either from their neighbor or somebody else they know, what's the best course of action? So they can do one of two things. They can call us at 297-3100 or they can contact the city's action center at okc.gov and you can actually find the link to that right on the front page. They can also contact us if they want any more information about what animal cruelty looks like, what they should be aware of, what's expected in the laws here in Oklahoma City and how they could be more responsible pet owners. We have lots of information for individuals out there and we also do a lot of training for other authorities on the topic so we've trained the police department and other animal organizations. It's a topic that is pretty near and dear to our heart and it's something that we really want to ensure that we're all working together to make a difference. And if you're a parent, what's the best just to teach your child just those basics of very basic. Pet ownership. Very what, basic pet what ownership. Kind of resources do you guys yeah. have for them? Well, pet ownership, teach them the appropriate way to pet a dog. Um, don't let them chase pigeons, you know, just some basic stuff about being kind and respectful. And to go above and beyond, even to do something with them to make a difference in the lives of an animal, whether it's your own pet or an animal at the animal shelter. As I mentioned earlier, we have a program called Kids for OKC Animals that you can um, do different kind of projects and activities. We have a responsible pet ownership coloring book. And we often do different uh, community programs and activities. I think she's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> she's snoring. She's very relaxed today. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Little programs and activities. So if there is a group out there that wants some support, they can contact us as well. And on a brighter subject, <laughs> Mina is available for adoption. She is, and if as you can see, yeah, she I, was snoring and sweetheart. sleeping and very sweet. I think we're going to wrap her up and send her home with you. I, I don't know. My uh, wife would love her. She's well, very adorable. But what if people are interested in, in adopting her, what do they? What would they do? So the shelter is open seven days a week. We try to make it very easy for people to adopt a pet. So our address is 2811 Southeast 29th Street. And you just come down anytime between the hours of 12 and 545 and bring your family with you and spend some time with her or one of the other animals that we have available and see if it's a right fit. All you need to bring with you is an identification to make sure that you are who you are. And our volunteers and our staff will take over and help you find the right pet. We also have pictures of every animal available for adoption on our website. So if you go to okc.gov slash animal welfare, you can see pictures of everybody, dogs, cats, and other animals right now that are just waiting for home. So I like to joke that people could sit there in the morning with their in their PJs with their coffee and shop for a pet and then decide to come down later yeah. and get to meet them. Um, but she is available right now. So yeah. we really, again, hope that she's gonna find somebody wonderful. I think she will. Julie Bank with the Oklahoma City Animal Welfare Department. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. And thanks for sharing information about her and this other important topic of animal cruelty. We appreciate it very much. Thank you.